welcome to International Love Story, the podcast about long distance and multicultural relationships. My name is Christina and today I'm welcoming Sophie and Bismarck again. This time they are sitting in Denmark. Last time we've talked that was who almost one year ago um, they were reunited but in Ghana. The one or the other might remember um, the podcast episode. It was uh, season two, episode nine. And today we are going to talk a little bit. We're going to catch up with you guys. I'm super interested about what happened in your lives the past few months. Um, I just mentioned... Um, in um in the beginning of our conversation that i kind of follow what you're doing um but i know that there's just so much more what's going on in your lives right now before we get to that um so for everyone who didn't listen to episode nine season two so who didn't listen to you guys um please just go ahead again and introduce yourself starting with sophie Okay, I'm Sophie. I'm from Denmark. Uh, right now, I work as a doctor. I graduated in like this summer and started working in August. The last time we recorded, I was a medical student in my 11th semester. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I am Bismarck. I'm from Ghana. I'm also a doctor. I've been working for a year now. Last time when we recorded, I was just starting work. Mm -hmm. And now I'm actually on holidays now in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we have been together for two and a half years. And we met in Ghana when I went on an exchange in Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's quite an amazing story because, I mean, you guys, so for everyone who's listening, just head to um, episode nine, season two, to listen to how they got to know each other and all the effort Bismarck put to, yeah, win Sophie for himself. Um, and it worked, obviously, because you guys, you're still together. Uh, you make it work, a long distance relationship, despite all the... Yeah, challenges. And I know that one of the biggest challenges in your lives is um, you're both, as you just said, you're both working. So you're both are very, very busy. Um, and jumping into, into that conversation, like I, I kind of would like to know if there's a way for you guys to summarize the last 12 months. Um, how would you summarize it? Okay, so shortly, it's like I came to Ghana in October and I was only supposed to stay there for a month, uh, but I kept extending and extending. I ended up staying for three months and I went home to Denmark and there was still COVID, so I quarantined. And then they went like, this month came in July, just after I became a doctor. And he visited me for a month uh, where we did like a whole tour so of like Denmark. And now here, two months later, he's here again. So that's the very short version. Yeah, it's a very uh, 12 months or maybe so of like a lot of emotions, you know, like work, like you're apart for about seven months and then you're together for a few months. And then it's just like, it is a lot in 12 months, but it's also so short, mm. you know? Yeah, but this time, like because of COVID, when I went to visit him in that, uh, October last year, I hadn't seen you for like nine, nine ten months. months. Ten months yeah. yeah, yeah, and now we've actually uh, reached to see each other for like four months out of the twelve months. Okay. Yeah. The last time we've talked, uh, so when you saw me, you were in Ghana. You guys, you saw it as a like try out period of living together, um, and now you're telling us, uh, Sophie, that. You extended your stay, so you stayed three months in total in Ghana, and that was the longest time you've spent together um, in a row, right, so far? Yeah, exactly. How how did it work out? So how did you feel? <laughs> okay, so it's like I went to Ghana before, but I went with like a group who were from different parts of the world, and I was kind of experiencing, experiencing Ghana with them. 
Um, but this time I went like on my own where we moved into this small flat for doctors mm -hmm. and uh, the first week we did not have anything but a bed and a like a small desk like yeah. the kitchen was not where there's nothing like in the kitchen the new yeah. uh, there was no water we didn't have that much electricity and the power kept like cutting and coming from like Denmark this is like not something I have to deal with every day. So I will say it was quite a challenge having to adapt to it alone because Bismarck was not really going through this journey with me. Mm. I was going through the journey of learning how to live without water and like power and stuff. Like it's not saying that Ghana normally is like this. It was just unfortunate the exact building we were living in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first few weeks were quite challenging for her because and also mostly in the first few weeks, I was always on shift. So I was mostly not at home. Mm -hmm. We moved to like a new apartment, a completely new apartment with nothing in it. And I'm always like working. Mm -hmm. So she had to just stay alone and figure things out, which was quite tough. Mm -hmm. But then it got better. Like it got really better because we made things work. We She put together a very nice apartment, even though we had some uh, designing uh Challenges like yes. both of us had different taste a bit, mm -hmm. you know? but like because she had more time, she really did a very good job in the apartment. Things started working out, and then it became like more of a smooth journey afterwards. That's why she kept on like adding <laughs> <laughs> Like when we got a, a couch and a like a dining table and a bit like the thing got like more cozy. When I was like, okay, I can stay here, but at first it was for real a bed and a desk where you're like. What kind of doctor who is on call 24-7 would sit and study at this desk? Yeah. But okay, mm -hmm. I would need something else. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, despite that, um, the few challenges you had in the beginning uh, when living in Ghana, I mean, you lived in Ghana. I would consider it as, as living because you were alone most of the time. And I guess you also went grocery shop shopping on your own, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. How was that? Wasn't that interesting? So um, I think I did the most expensive way you can buy anything in Ghana, Why? like at all. <laughs> so I spent a lot of money on groceries. Like I went to grocery shopping in like a mall, like normal kind of mall, like where you would go in Germany or in Denmark to shop. But what I found out that was like two minutes from my own street, there was like a whole like market where I could just have bought the stuff mm -hmm. but I, I chose to go to the mall because yeah. I also like since I was far away from home I wanted some to make some Danish dishes and so on mm -hmm. which was like the most expensive thing you could ever think of doing like I made lasagna which is not Danish but cheese in Ghana is like yeah high we're not a cheese company nah. <laughs> like it's so expensive and you need an awful lot of cheese it was like Lot. I think I paid like what what will be in euros like oh, 40, 40 euros for a lasagna. Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> because like if you want that much of cheese, uh, it's quite expensive. Okay, but also we needed some lasagna at some point. <laughs> but the thing is, it was it was quite hard to go to the local markets also because it's different. At the start, it was hard to do a lot of things outside alone for her, but she really got pretty comfortable because sometimes I would be at work and I'd be like, where are you? She's like, okay, I'm around here doing stuff. Okay. Like, hmm. okay. Also because I was afraid of constantly getting a higher price than everyone else yeah. going to a market being yeah. blonde and, and white. I was like, this is going to cost me so much money compared to if Bismarck just went. So yeah, I can only imagine like you, Sophie, um, preparing dinner, Bismarck coming back home, being like being surprised, um, spending a night together, having some nice dinner, maybe a nice wine. And like, because when I um, think back when uh, Nacho and I, when we started somehow to have a routine, in my case, it took quite a while to get used to, to new circumstances, especially in a country that's not your home country. So you can be very proud of yourself that you managed everything. Yeah, it was quite a challenge at first. Like I will really say the first month 
was quite tough. Yeah. Um, but for instance, like I, I complained about not having water and then Bismarck called his mother who then got his cousin to just instantly bring me like a giant bucket for water. So we will try to fix my problems for me, like the things like I felt, felt that I needed. Mm, mm. And how was it for you, Bismarck? Or how is it for you, Bismarck? Because you are in Denmark right now. Um, I mean, it's, oh. it feels like vacation, no? Or or is it like... It's, that is a perfect like uh, explanation for me because before this trip, I was working like almost every day, like at the emergency department and other places, working mm -hmm. every day without some time off so firstly this is like a, a vacation because i'm resting every time but also maybe i feel a bit like a stay home dad which is also nice because now i also get to make her dinner she goes to work and then come back home and then it feels good to also sometimes explore denmark on my own a mm -hmm. bit yeah he had yeah. to get a bit of a push <laughs> he was like i cannot take the train alone and i'm like I'm pretty sure you're capable of taking the train without me like i don't want to go experience stuff by myself i'm like i'm pretty sure you want to and when i like he got the little push and he went out he came home and was like so many <laughs> saying like i just love being out and like i met this other Ghanaian and like i met a Ghanaian on the train and in the store and yeah yeah well i mean it was nice going on. I just even want to go out every day now. Yeah. But yeah. why did you need this extra push? What were you afraid of, may I ask? Not really because, well, maybe a little bit because, well, I've used train systems in other places in the world. I've been, I've lived in Madrid for about two months, Germany for about a month, and other European countries. But I felt like the train system is quite like, difficult a bit here you just need to check in check out of every place get a special card and i didn't know if the card i had worked on or so i just didn't want any stress because i was on vacation mm -hmm. but like when i needed to get something for this particular Ghanaian, then i wanted to make it meant that i had to go mm -hmm. so she she said oh you can get this card you can try it out you can get like a car to work and everything so that I was a push explained like thoroughly how yeah. like I, I already had the card i explained how you put money on it like every step of the way when you take the train you check in when you go out <laughs> of the train you check out yeah. like i really tried to explain so it was and it was not stressful. that difficult yeah. yeah because i didn't like stress in my vacation i understand but it's just so cool to see like um, what different challenges there are in different countries, like yeah. talking about Ghana and then talking about get Denmark. So if you're just not used to it, um, it, it can be just like a huge challenge for you, even though for, for Sophie, like um, taking a bus or taking a train, it's quite normal. But then for you, Bismarck, yeah. it's like a whole new adventure. It's a whole new adventure. <laughs> it's a really whole new adventure, you know. I will also yeah. say in Ghana, I was not that adventurous. I just took a cab. Yeah, she only took like every time. A cab. Every they have time. like a just like Uber. Mm -hmm. They have like Bolt, and I use that because the whole thing of taking like a tuk tuk or whatever, like a bus it was too like much, that. too <laughs> much stress. Yeah, I yeah. had no clue how to get on the buses yeah. or out of the bus. Yeah, if the bus is coming, because I guess they're not always on point, or how does it no, work? You have to know which bus is bound for which like line or anything. And that's quite hard to know without Google Maps or anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But look at you. Yeah, awesome. I mean, now you, you are there, you're in, in Denmark. You're going to stay for, I think, for two more weeks now from now on. So uh, ten, like days, ten days, ten, days ten more, more days. So it's almost like half of your vacation is, is yeah. done, unfortunately. Um, I also remember like the last time we've talked, um, we also, we've talked about your plans for the future and your plans for the future where at this point, I don't know if something changed meanwhile, where that you'd like to live somewhere in Europe and somewhere in Europe in approximately two years. So from now, on it's just one more year because when we've talked that was one year ago you said two years so is this still in the plans to live in in Europe in one year or what happened with that 
it's been in the plans so far. Everything we said, I think I would say it's going according to plan. Mm-hmm. Or like it's just unraveling bit by bit. The plan hasn't really changed or hasn't even changed. So yeah. Maybe now we know for sure exactly where in Europe we want to be. Yeah. Where's it going to yeah. be? Yeah. Denmark. Yeah. You said that very anticlimactic. <laughs> you had to build it up. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It was Europe and it's Denmark now. So yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of uh it's not the easiest country mm-hmm. to come to. So you need to meet certain requirements. Yeah. So are you going to print out 60 pages of conversation again? <laughs> oh, we oh, actually, uh, he applied for a visa. And this time we did an interview on the phone, which felt like a uh, 30 minutes exam on Bismarck, where it was like, I was super nervous because it was like, what if I cannot tell him, tell them his like name of his sisters or like his mother's name. And I was like, oh my God. And they're like, where do they live? And I'm like, oh, do you mean I have to say the exact street? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, he like passed. So he got a one year visa instead. Wow. Yeah, so now I actually have like a multiple entry visa. I can come and go anytime I want within this one mm-hmm. year. And then, you know, it only gets better after you, after you get like a, a one year visa. So now traveling to and fro is not really difficult. Mm-hmm. So you were able to travel to Denmark directly this time? Yeah, yeah in July now. Yeah, he yeah. got the um, one year visa for July. And since then, we have not really needed to think about visas because yeah. it's it lasts one year and you yeah. can stay for 90 days yeah 90 it's actually 180 days in the one year okay so 90, 90 days in, in six months, months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's amazing so no struggle there anymore at least no worries yeah. if you can fly or no you can't 60 page. <laughs> no 60 page messages for the embassy yeah that's crazy <laughs> Luckily not. that's crazy yeah, yeah cool I love how things are basically working out for you guys. It's it's really seems like everything went according to plan. So yeah, you don't even have to think about plan B now because plan A is working out for you guys. <laughs> yeah, so far. So far, yeah. <laughs> But it wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy, you know, because there was a lot of, for example, uh, the visa, there was a lot of uh, stress because the first time I did not get a visa from Denmark, So I was like, it's just one of those stress strength. Yeah, and I'm kind of like, he's an optimist and I'm a pessimist. So I was like, like, no way he's going to get it this time. Like, Denmark just doesn't like you. It's not going to happen. And then he's like, oh, I got the visa. Like, yeah. So even though the plan plan A has been going on very well, it has not been easy. And every time it feels like it may either go sideways or not. But for now, we're just enjoying the moment. And yeah, we're following the path of plan A. How, I mean, you, Bismarck, you are going to keep on, or you do have to work for two years, right? Do I remember correctly? To get my uh, permanent license. Oh, true. Yeah. That was the thing, to get your permanent license. And with that, you'll be able to work in Drew, but only yes. if you if you speak the language. So you have to, you're, you're learning Danish, right? Yeah, I'm learning. I mean, the process I've started and I've done up to a point, which is like, very small but like baby steps now yeah yeah he took the intro class which is like a1 i think nice so what what can you say for example can you can you give i knew that was coming coming, (laughs) what can you say (laughs) and i was like i was trying to remember everything i learned about five six months ago actually more than that it's more it's more than a year isn't it oh it was actually before you came to it was your graduation yeah so Yeah, I can say uh, my name is Bismarck. <laughs> That is yeah, English. Yeah, Bismarck. Uh, I can just say basic things about <laughs> myself, like my name, my age, but it's very hard to hold conversations. But also if someone is speaking, I can maybe hear some words that I know and I will be able to guess maybe what they're saying, maybe about 10% right, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I can no yeah. longer speak in private. Like, I really thought I could speak in private, but now he's, like, listening, like, oh, did you just talk about this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, 
yeah, I'm making the same experience. In our case, it's a little bit annoying because in, in Nacho's case, I mean, he understands everything already, uh, what I would say, which is fine. So it's like, okay, just have to be very careful around him when talking uh, to, to friends and family members. <laughs> Um, but what's really annoying is that for some reason, I don't know why he is so much into German Schlager. So German, German pop, old pop music. And, um, so he would just play music in the morning and it's super annoying. And he would sing with it, like to basically improve his vocabulary as well. Like this, that's also a way of learning for him. And I'm like, here, are you serious? You can't just put it in a Fisher or like all those old songs that are like, I don't know, 30 years old and be like, so like Luftballons, that's the, the song he's listening to. Yeah. For example, yeah, that's good. It's by Nina. Like I really, I remember having to mm. analyze that song in German. Ninety nine red yeah. balloons. Yeah, nine and nine love balloons. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it's just like okay, I appreciate that you are so into German culture, German music. Even though if I don't consider this German music, but it's okay. It's just like my personal taste. But it can it can be very 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 annoying. But it's also very funny. So it's like, you know, somehow it's balancing. <laughs> so how are your next month going to look like exactly? If it's Plan A. So if it's Plan A, which is Plan A, I'm supposed to be back working from uh, the first of November. So I'm going home on the thirtieth of October. And then she's going to continue working as well. <laughs> but we plan to see each other for Christmas back in Denmark. Because now I usually have a long period of my work. But she doesn't really have a long period of work. So it's better if I come to Denmark. And also it helps with, you know, the whole plan A, if I come to Denmark mm -hmm. a lot. It will help with like visas and also like the whole moving process. Mm -hmm. So our next stop is December for Christmas. Yeah. Which is actually not that far. Away, actually. Yeah, unfortunately, like Bismarck works an awful lot. Like I feel like he works all the time, every day, even on the weekends, where I like I have days off, but then I, I only have like five weeks of vacation time. In but I can't like take them yeah. like in a I can take them in a consecutive order. I can't just say, okay, I want to take January off. Like I can't do that. Mm. But I have two months off every year because I work almost every day. So I can like take a very long break, like a whole like three days off, which is good. Mm. Wow. Oh God. I just imagine like working every day and then, yeah. and because you're, you're working more than 10 hours per day or how many hours are you working, may I ask? Uh, usually it depends on which department I am, but the structure is you have to finish your work for the day because I'm a junior doctor. I see all like the new cases and then until like there are no more new cases mm -hmm. or until I finish all my reviews. So I could finish a bit early in the day or I could finish very late in the mm -hmm. day. So there's no such structures of like, okay, you're going to work for 10 hours today. It could be 10 hours today. It could be 12 hours tomorrow. It could be five hours tomorrow. Mm -hmm. but mostly you have to be there almost every mm -hmm. day. It's part of like the training process because like they put you so close to the hospital and then you are still being trained for all these things. It's, it's not a system all of us like so much, but that is what we work with as junior doctors. So that's why we get a long time mm. off when we get. Like mm, which is amazing as well. So that's basically giving you the opportunity to, to meet yeah. in person again. So nice. <laughs> Another question I have um, is... Because, I mean, as I said before, I'm, I'm somehow following you on Instagram. So every time uh, you're active on Instagram, I'm soaking in all the information. And if I remember correctly, Bismarck, isn't there another project you're working on? Um, don't you have your, your own company or did, didn't you find, found your own company meanwhile as well? Uh, one other passion I have, it's with uh, tailoring fa fashion. Mm -hmm. So I have a I have a company that makes clothes. Uh, for now, like we make 
clothes for doctors and health workers. So I, uh, we make scrubs, white coats for like hospitals, for companies, for students, and for people who need such stuff. Mm-hmm. So that is like the company, but we also have like a, a foundation as part of like the whole company thing, which which I am also which part she of. is part of. That's the foundation so, we've uh, talked about last time already, right? Ah, yeah, got yes, it. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. So like now the company is doing well. It's actually, and then yeah, she. I needed some uh, help with the foundation, with like marketing and Instagram and everything. Not with the foundation, with your scrub. No, no, I mean with the, <laughs> anyway, with the scrub company. Yes. Potato, potato. Yeah. <laughs> I was just lucky. She's really good at Instagram. She, I mean, she's good at Instagram. Most of the things you see on her Instagram page is me. No, it's not me. It's her. I mean, is <laughs> it like he didn't really have like a theme for his scrub company so i made like a plan for him for his social media and what yeah. he should like write and post and like somehow he got the idea that it was a great idea to post like 10 posts a day <laughs> uh which will just be cut on instagram you won't no one will see it so yeah it seems like it's been getting him a lot of followers yeah and then so she is helping with my marketing and my like extra business side on Instagram, which is really good because I don't have the time to do it. And then not so much of the skill to do it on Instagram, which she is helping me with. So yeah, I can say my uh, company is going well. Mm-hmm. It's actually good with, in terms of money. Yeah, helps a mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some extra, extra money on site. And, and part of this is going into, the fun, uh, into your fund- foundation as well? Yes. How is your foundation going though? So now the, the things are a bit slow in the foundation because we finished our first project of the foundation, which was taking care of, uh, we had a kid who had a uh, retinoblastoma, that's like a cancer of the eye mm-hmm. that was going through chemotherapy and a lot of like treatment, which we finished. So that was like the first part of like the big project we did for the foundation. And then afterwards, like COVID hit. So it was hard to do more things with the foundation. But so far, we have a long-term plan that we are working on. Maybe in the next few months, a long-term plan for the foundation, we will like, bring it out. Because now she's a partner in the foundation as mm-hmm. well. And then we are trying to make a sustainable uh, plan for the foundation because it's something both of us are very passionate about. We have uh, different parts of the foundation that we are handling. We have like a theme, we have the education part of the foundation, the health part of the foundation, which we've drawn a lot of projects for, which we are working on both of us. Okay, maybe we should explain what the foundation is. So it's a foundation for community development. And first we started focusing on treating people with diseases they had, especially kids. For instance, this one kid with retinoblastoma. Uh, but you can't really fix a problem by point. So what we want to focus now is like uh, preventive medicine. So we want to educate the town before they get really sick. So they know what to look for. And also like in general, prevent uh, them from getting sick, like using mosquito nets, like, uh, but like also with the ecosystem, some of them are using mosquito nets to fish, which is ruining the ecosystem in the lake that's right next to this community. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot of different themes, as she said, mostly now. That's why we were sitting down to plan. We want to be more focused on preventive medicine. And then before we do like more curative medicine and also to be very eco-friendly with everything we do. And also that to that, instead of just like a lot of people they just load money on like these small communities and it won't really help just to load on money to them you need like you need to help them create themselves so we want to create jobs for them so they can like earn an income themselves for instance get them to make stuff themselves they can sell in this city so they can get a whole system themselves instead of stuff being Mm -hmm. like the europeans who just put money on them and then hope the problem goes mm. away. Yeah, more skill, skill development, I think. Mm, yes. yes. So you're proactive. Yeah. Yes. And you bought uh, some land as well, right? Some property uh, a while ago. Yeah. yeah. 
what are you doing with this property um what's the plan for that yeah so it's part of the whole uh planning that we were talking about we have the property that's where we want it to be like the should i use headquarters or maybe like a, a site a place where we can have like a let's say for example if we want to do the scale training and everything in the town that is going to be like a place you can have like a library skills workshop like a place where people can know this is where the foundation is and we can run projects from there so that is the main purpose why we bought the property but we are not so like planning how to use that property like very well she was doing a lot of like measurement the land i don't know if you saw it on like instagram yeah they were like measuring the whole land and now they have cut down like some of like so we can build on the land we actually started growing some coconut and some other fruits on the land to make it because it's also right by the lake we wanted to make it so eco-friendly you know you just don't destroy the straps and everything so we're growing grass we're growing like trees coconuts other fruits and everything yes. we're getting like uh, an architect to look at it very well the way we can do it more friendly for like you know, like a bit slowly because it's also very expensive to do so a lot of projects you're working on i really love um the path you've chosen um on helping others as well with the skills you're having um and as i said last time i'm still super excited where this is going to lead you guys um how this is going to grow Because what I see in one year, it grew a lot already. Um, so yeah, I'm super, super, super excited for what's going to come next. Hey, we're going to invite you <laughs> to the property and to the community for anything you can do to help. That'll be fun. So we fun to invite our friends to come and help. Yes. We'll be a chance to travel to Africa. Yes, too. we'd we love to. We'd love to. We've been to Africa two years, two and a half years ago. But um, just for tourist um, purpose, obviously. Um, but that's actually one of my of my life goals to be as active as you guys are, um, helping others to help themselves. So what you're doing, this is why I said, like, not only placing money there, but starting from from where the problem starts involves from, you know. And I can imagine that this is not only a lot of work, but most probably a lot of emotions as well, especially maybe for you, Bismarck, because um, you are aware of, I mean, it's not only your hometown or your home country, you're also aware of the situation there because um, you've lived in Ghana your whole life. And then being able to be, yeah to 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 help with the skills as i said the skills you have and the passion you're having for those people and for for the community and hopefully from there on it's going to grow in a way that you'll also be able to help other communities you know and i guess this is going to be the long-term goal to to grow it in a way that you'll be able to yeah. help even more people yeah yeah exactly nice Is it um, because last time we spoke, uh, you were still filling in some paperwork for the foundation in order to make it a legal organization? Is this done or is this still in process? Well, it's done. It's done. It's like a, it's like a legal organization. Now. So now you can actually um, make donations, no? Yeah, you can make you can make donations. The reason why we hadn't put like a call out there for donations was because like we wanted the the projects to be laid out you know if someone is donating to something we wanted them to know that oh okay so they're donating to this this is the whole roadmap of like what you're donating into that is what we're working on and then in a very few months i think very very soon maybe even before the end of the mm -hmm. year the plan at least will be known that before you can donate, you know, okay, I'm donating to, let's say, this health education awareness about, let's say, malaria program. If you're donating, I'm donating to maybe housing or maybe I'm donating to a uh, hand skills workshop for these people. Mm -hmm. That is what I want to do before we let people donate. Mm -hmm. Oh, got it, got it. As soon as you are at the stage uh, where you can publish it and be more more open about it and share it with others will you let me know so i'll be able to share it as well perfect yeah, sure. perfect that'll be great 
Muy bien. Normally what I would ask now is for, for advice, but I mean, this is our second interview already. And last time we spoke, you gave a lot of helpful advice already to everyone who was listening or who's going to listen to, to our first podcast episode together. What I would be interested now is if you look back the past few months, what are you mostly proud of? Okay. So I'm taking the last few months as since we, um, after we did the first like, talk, what I'm really proud of is the small wins that we've had. See, for a year, it looked like we've achieved a lot because you're like, oh, this is a lot that you've done. Things have gotten better and everything. But everything was just a small win. So you add, you put all these small wins together. For example, the first win was like, we realized that, oh, we can actually stay with each other because we stayed with each other for three months. And then we were like, yeah, I want to spend my life with her. Like, I want to do it. That was a small win. So after the small win, a challenge will come in. COVID is still there. How do I travel back to see her? And the other small win was I got a visa for a long-term thing. And then the other small win was like, oh, it means you have to buy tickets every mm -hmm. time. But every time we get a small win, it, it works. You're going to get a ticket. You're going to go. And then you have, you're going to spend the summer. You're going to spend like now. All these are small wins. And then I would just want to say that If you take that into perspective, these small wins together is a big win. And that is one thing I'm very proud of. And it's because both of us really wanted to make this happen. So we took it bit by bit. That is something I'm very proud mm -hmm. of. That's also something you mentioned when we first had our interview. It's, it's, just, it's just so cool to see that this is working out, that this is, It's, it sounds so easy. It's not, but it sounds so easy. <laughs> the most challenging thing was really the, like nine months with COVID because you really need to work on the communication and like every other long distance relationship. It is super hard. Like I think that date nights, you really have to think out of the box. It gets boring to do FaceTime calls after a while, like nine months of FaceTime calls. I will say it gets boring at yeah. some point. Yet, like you feel like you just say the same things over and over, for me at least. Yeah. Uh, so I'm quite amazed that how we dealt with that. And every time you're different moods, you know. Of course, if you also work in the hospital and if your work is taking almost every attention that you have, then it's also harder to to be there for the other person, you know. So that's also something we are proud of that even after work and everything, we still make it work. Like we still are there for each other sometimes. Mm. Oh, yeah, every time actually. yeah, it has gotten more difficult since we both started working because Bismarck is working all the time and I'm also working. So like finding the right time to talk during a day may be difficult. And I often call him while he's at work. Mm. Yeah. Like always, I always call him <laughs> while he's at work. <laughs> Yeah, and that's maybe not where you can have to be very deep conversations yeah. while he's sitting with like, other people around him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at least, you know, if something occurs or if there's anything you'd like to talk about, you know how to reach him. And uh, I think then you'll be able to schedule another time to be able to talk about it in detail when when something really yeah. important comes up. Yeah. yeah. I would love to meet you guys in person someday. So please make it yeah. work to move to, to Denmark this month. Yeah. Okay, so the pressure is on you now um, because that's not so far <laughs> from Germany. You know, actually, I was thinking, you know, we could meet all our social media friends sometimes. You know, I was like, maybe there could be like an event. Maybe you can organize that event. You are because the international you have met a lot yeah. of the people we speak like, with on Instagram. You have interviewed yeah? them at some point. Yeah, it could be like, yeah. oh, this weekend is international love stories. Like weekend for all international couples. And they were like, okay. At, at least a lot of them are located in Germany. Around, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because what I would love to do is um, on the long run, and this is one of my projects, um, to, to create a community, especially with um, international couples and long distance couples. 
um, where you'd be able to exchange information or um, because what I've the experience I've made is that even though you guys you are in a different situation than Nacho and I were, but oftentimes when it comes to to advice in general or when it comes to paperwork, it's helpful to connect with others to figure out okay how did they deal with that because they somehow made it work. But what did they do, you know? So we see how this is going. That is really nice because yeah. I actually think the biggest problem being in a long distance relationship is that other people who are not in the same kind of relationship does not get your problems. No, yeah. They're like, why would you be in like a relationship where you can't see each other? Oh my God, it must be so hard. But when you try to talk about how it is and how it feels, a lot of people just don't get what you're saying. So it, it's not helpful talking to, like, it, it will be very helpful talking to other people who are going through the same yeah, thing. Yeah. And I feel like it will be a safe space. It will be a very good safe space for, like, such couples because sometimes you even find yourself, like, looking on social media if someone is in the same situation as you because you may want an advice or you may think that, oh, what I'm, what I'm thinking or what I'm planning to do, is it okay or not? But such such a platform will be a very safe space mm. to free and then think and talk to other people about your situation. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very like long, long, long term goal. Um, basically, taking all the couples we know already, all the couples from Instagram, and somehow connecting them on one platform. What you just said, Bismarck, where they know like this is a safe space for them. Um, they can be very open about different topics having several topics or several themes uh, within this platform um, and yeah, not feeling alone on, on this journey because I felt so alone when uh, Nacho and I were dating on distance. I didn't have anyone. I could talk about it in detail. You know, no one understood me. This is exactly what you just said, Sophie. And um, you don't have to go through, through all this hardship. Um, on your own after all, because there are so many out there that will be able to support you because they have been there themselves. <laughs> well, I know Sophie, um, you have to go because you have to work in a while. I'm really, really glad I was able to catch up with you again, um, to talk to you in person and uh, knowing firsthand what's going on in your life. And I bet there's the one or the other listener who was waiting for this episode to be published. Because, um, yeah, you're still like one of our first couples we interviewed. And that's one year ago. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's quite an amazing journey you guys have been on. Yeah. And then we also like we want to thank you for uh, this opportunity to uh, first like interview us to get our story to the world. We know that we're not like the only couple doing long distance, doing this international love thing. But we also want to say that we just want to inspire people out there. And then we know it's not easy. And then what you're doing is a very great thing because you may not know how much is helping other people, but if anyone is listening, I know they're probably getting very good stuff from what you're doing here. So we also just want to say we're quite grateful for this opportunity. Oh, you're so kind. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we love it. It has been a, a journey for us as well, especially getting in contact with people like you, seeing you grow. And um, this is something I say to almost every couple, but I really mean it. I'm very, very curious where you are going to be in a couple of years, where your journey is going to lead you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and this is the last episode of season two. So next year, beginning of next year, most probably in February, but I'll keep you posted. We will start with season three. Season three is going to be quite different to our last seasons. We will put much more effort in what we're doing. We will go back to bi-weekly, so stay tuned for that. And if you don't follow us on Instagram and or Facebook yet, go ahead and follow us. It's International Love Story. Um, this is also where we keep you posted about everything going on. I'll let you know 
about the details in January, middle of January. And yeah, with this being said, have a wonderful Christmas time. Have a wonderful New Year's celebration. We'll hear each other next year. Super excited. And please take care of yourself. 